This story begins in New Delhi, the home of the prominent late sculptor Manali Mukherjee. Hundreds upon thousands of slides show us the monumental sculptures she produced and her remarkable imprint on art history. How do we begin to archive an artist's life work? And how do art archives shape our understanding of history? This process actually begins with first going to that artist's personal archive and seeing what material is there with the idea of scoping and arranging that. And then uh, we bring the material to our office to digitize. Here we digitize everything and then organize it. What's interesting in Minali Mukherjee's practice is that the repetition of knotting and her successively taking photographs repeatedly of the same artwork. I was also connecting in some ways in the process of like digitization of the works like so it's a repeated process of like how you do it. Meanwhile we are also thinking like how do we want to present it, in what order, how the researchers primary idea of how they want to frame the artist and its practice. It's almost like a never ending. <clears throat> Uh, yeah. process. So, yeah. you know, what did it mean to be engrossed by this process of archiving? Does it ever end? We have been working on Manalini Mukherjee Archive for a very long time now. So, we started sometime in early 2020 and now we are in mid-2023. But what is also interesting is to work on this massive archive in, in a very immersed way. And that was quite an experience for all of us. I mean, I was familiar with Manalini Mukherjee's practice. Uh, and her artwork and her practice has always been defined as this very intuitive, very organic practice, which it was. But when we came across the material in the archive, the archive kind of told us a very different story. The different aspects that we wanted to highlight, one was photo documentation of her artworks, her process. Also like her process where she's making these amazing installation instructions, very precise, very controlled drawings with annotations to kind of give instructions how to pack her artworks, how to install it, how to display it, how to fold it, how to vacuum clean it. I would sit with these digitized files, like thousands of them, uh, to make selection. And after a point, every, everything would look the same. I would dream of these kind of infinite Excel sheets and then like empty Excel sheets. I'm just scrolling down, down and there is nothing on the Excel sheet. Another dream that I remember was where I was sleeping and then uh, the quilt that, that I was uh, I mean, sleeping and I saw a quilt with these images of 35 month slides all over the quilt. So I think it also kind of started having a different kind of afterlife all together, you know, in our minds, in our... And it also kind of, of uh, uh, impacted the, how we worked on the archive. It's very interesting because artists are completely consumed and immersed in their interests and their pursuits, whatever they may be. And when you're working in an archive, you have access to the artist's preoccupation over this much time. And the, the labor of the work necessitates that you also sort of are immersed and are as preoccupied with them. Both the artwork and the, the personal archive are exhibited in Hong Kong for the very first time. So our team has this incredible opportunity to have a first-hand experience with these artists' personal archives. And for us, what we would like to do is to, to extend that opportunity, extend the invitation to our users so that we can create these intimate experiences with artworks as well as archival materials. I think the work of archivists is absolutely vital and crucial. You know, I always say that I don't think archives are static entities. They, in fact, are breathing, living and changing and they transform with subsequent generations of historians, academics, artists, whoever engages them. Our uh, conception of the archive is also something that uh, knows it all or, you know, produces all the answers to something. But it's also about generating questions. It's also about creating relationships with material, right? And I think that's what Asia Archive does really well. You realize that 
the work you're doing today will have immense impact in the future. And so therefore you sort of go and commit to the ordinary every day, knowing that you don't have to think about it in a short stretch of time, but in a much sort of longer durée of history.